Hi, my name is Rob Hughes, and I've been an Orion employee for the last 10 years. And today we're going to talk about our Orion XTA Classic 8-inch Dobsonian Telescope, one of our most popular telescopes because of its combination of diameter, or aperture, and focal length. It allows this telescope to be used on a variety of different deep sky and solar system objects like the planets and the moon. This is how the XT8 will arrive on your doorstep. This box here contains the base components, while this larger box contains the telescope tube and some of the other accessories. The first step in assembling the telescope will be to take out all of the parts and begin assembly of the base. Here's a peek at what you'll see when you first open the two boxes. The smaller box contains the base components and the hardware, whereas the larger box contains the optical tube assembly and a small box of accessories. Here are the unpacked components of the XTA Classic Dobsonian Telescope. We have the telescope tube here, the base assembly pieces, as well as the included accessories. The first step of assembly will be to build the base. First, we'll attach the three plastic feet onto the bottom triangular base plate of the XT8 Dobsonian base. We want to be sure to attach the feet onto the bottom of the plate so that the Teflon pads are oriented on the top. To attach the feet, we take a Phillips screw, insert it through the foot, and screw it into the base plate using a Phillips screwdriver. Repeat this step for the other two feet. Once all three feet are attached, we can move on to assembling the sideboards of the base. Next, we'll attach the front brace board to the two side panels of the base. To do this, we'll use the included base assembly screws and the included 4mm hex key. Take one of the side panels, and you'll notice three holes on the front surface here. You want to line those holes up with the three holes on the front brace panel. Line that up, thread one of the base assembly screws through, and tighten in place with the included 4mm hex key. Once you've installed this first screw, go ahead and repeat this procedure for the remaining five base assembly screws. At this point, we don't need to completely tighten down the base assembly screws. We first need to take these three loosely assembled boards and attach them to the top base plate. In order to attach these two pieces together, we need to make sure that the holes on the top base plate are lined up with the holes in the three loosely assembled side panels. On the top circular base panel, these two closely separated holes are for attaching the front brace whereas these other holes are for attaching the side panels. Positioning the two pieces can be a little tricky when you're just starting out, but once you have one of the screws installed, it becomes much easier. So let's line up the attachment holes here. I'm installing one of these side panels first. Let's get a couple finger tightens there, and then use the 4mm hex key to complete the installation. You'll want to use the 4mm hex key for the remaining five base assembly screws. Next, we'll attach the two base pieces to one another by using the central bolt assembly. The first step in this process is to take the white nylon bushing and insert it in the top base panel. Insert the white nylon bushing all the way into the center hole until the top of the bushing is flush with the top surface of the base plate. Next, we take the threaded T-nut and insert it into the bottom base plate so that its flange top is on the same side as the Teflon pads. Next, we'll take the large hex head bolt, take one of the two 3 8 inch washers, install it onto the bolt, and then thread the bolt up through the bottom base plate through the threaded T-nut. Now with the large hex bolt installed, we can take the upper base assembly and carefully position it so that the threaded bolt goes through the center hole with the white nylon bushing installed. 
Place the large fender washer onto the central bolt, and then place the lock nut on top. Finger tighten a few turns, and then complete installation with a crescent wrench. In addition to the supplied wrench, you may find it helpful to use an additional 16 millimeter wrench in order to finish tightening down the lock nut. You want to tighten this until there's just a little bit of separation between the bottom and the top baseboards. You can tell if there's separation or not by gently lifting the assembled base. Here's an example of a good amount of separation between the base ports. Let's complete base assembly by attaching the handle to the base. Take the handle, insert one of the black socket head screws, and position through the through holes on the front brace board. We'll then tighten the handle in place using a black nut and black washer. Thread the washer onto the screw, and then secure in place with the black nut. You can use the in included crescent wrench to tighten this down. Firmly tighten the handle by holding the bolt in place with a crescent wrench, and using the supplied 6mm hex bolt to tighten into place. Repeat for the other screw.